Holy shit, you guys. It happened. It finally happened. If you're watching this on a Saturday or any time during the weekend, you probably know what I'm talking about. This isn't even a buzzer beater or a close game. This is a 20-point blowout that's become the most compelling game of the tournament. I'm talking about a number 16 seed over a 1 seed. One of like the 5 or 7 things in sports that I thought I would never get to see happen just happened tonight. And it was unbelievable. It wasn't what I would have ever imagined. I would have always thought this would have had to be a tooth and nail battle. When you look at the history of the great upsets in all of sports, they're usually pretty close games. Not only to have it be one of the great upsets in sports history, but to have it be a massacre. 16 seeded UMBC not only annihilated a number one seed in Virginia, they annihilated the number one overall seed. And this was from a team that needed to make a buzzer beating three pointer to win their conference tournament just to get into the NCAA title game. There was no warning that anything like this would come. When I first saw that UMBC was winning by that much and was ahead by double digits, I went and looked to see through their regular season games to see if by some chance did the committee get it wrong assigning them a 16 seed? Was this unfair to Virginia? No. Yes, they did win their last nine games up until this game, but like I said, the the last game, the uh, conference tournament championship, they needed to nail a three at the buzzer just to get in. So that came absolutely out of nowhere, and it, it brings to mind, you know, different types of lists. There's the greatest upsets of all time list that comes up, the greatest accomplishments, achievements, in the history of sports and the greatest choke jobs, the greatest no-shows. And Virginia already has one on that list from 1982, which Sports Center has been going through these lists too. Um, Virginia losing to Chaminade in 1982 when nobody knew who Chaminade was. Now that was a regular season loss. So while that was probably the greatest divide of talent in the history of sports where a team was upset, or I'm sorry, in the history of college basketball, where a team was upset. That was at least a regular season game. Virginia could recover from that and go on their merry way, and it wouldn't necessarily affect how their season ended. Um, this ends their season in an embarrassing way, and they were showing clips of the press conference afterwards, and, oh, it was brutal. The media asking this one poor kid, um, were you aware that a 16 had never beaten a 1. Of course he's aware. And he just uh, says very flatly to him, yes, thanks for reminding us. We knew very much that that was the case. Kind of a dumb question and a little rough for a 19 or a 20 year old kid to have to answer in a moment like that. I cannot imagine being in their shoes having to live that down. At least they're going to a campus that I would hope would be supportive, but I'm sure there are going to be some haters out there even on their own campus after that. Ooh, that's going to be brutal. Um, but some of the other things that come to mind, um, I mean, SportsCenter was comparing it to the Jets in Super Bowl three beating the Colts. Um, they beat the Colts 16-7. to So when you look at all-time upsets that weren't necessarily close games, that's kind of up there. The Jets won by nine points, so that's by two scores. And there was never a point where the Colts really had a chance to tie or win late in that game. The, the Colts tried to take control early on, and they would intercept it, or they would get intercepted by the Jets' defense time and time again. Um, they never had a lead. They never came back to tie. They were never in control of that game, even though it looked like they should take control. Um, they talked about the Miracle on Ice, Team USA in 1980. And I, I can't even think about comparing this to that. That uh, Miracle on Ice is so transcendent. It will always be the number one greatest moment in sports history. I cannot compare this to that. Um, 
and Team USA did not blow out the Russians. That's the other thing. Uh, I don't know if the gap in talent is comparable with USA and the Russians in 1980. It's hard to, especially comparing basketball to hockey. Um, we know how legendary that gap was for the USA to make up. I really can't begin to try and compare that. Um, but it is interesting that in this type of an upset, it is a 20-point shellacking. Now, interestingly also, this game was tied at the half. And UMBC started gaining ground on Virginia in the second half, and they just didn't stop. And every time Virginia tried to cut into that double-digit lead, UMBC just came back with a ferocity. But man, now uh, as far as things in sports I thought I might never see, I have a certain list of these things. Um, some things have come very close to happening, and one of those things was a 16 beating a 1 in an NCAA tournament game. For years, I used to watch these games hoping and wondering, maybe this will be the one time it happens. And not only did it never happen, but it never came close. So I started to give up on that ever happening in my lifetime. So finally, it did. I'm glad I got to see it. Uh, but a couple of other things. Um, a few years back in 2015, Kentucky looked like they were going to be the first team in a long time to go undefeated in an NCAA regular season and win the championship. And they got to the Elite Eight where they ran into, or no, I believe it was the Final Four, they ran into Wisconsin, and then Wisconsin ran into Duke. And Duke won the championship rather than Kentucky. And that whole tournament, all I cared about was, is Kentucky going to pull it off and finish the undefeated season? That's something that has not happened since Indiana in 1976 with Bobby Knight's Hoosiers team has not happened since. Um, similarly, an undefeated season in the NFL since the 1972 undefeated Dolphins. The Patriots did it in the regular season, but I'm talking about regular season and playoffs and Super Bowl. The Patriots came so close, and then they ran into David Tyree reaching up and getting a little bit of it on his helmet before grabbing it back, laying across the 25-yard line. Rodney Harrison could not stop him, and uh, yeah, these are Giants colors. So. Um, so that kind of foiled history, and normally I would have, under any other circumstance besides the Patriots playing the Giants, I would have been rooting for the Patriots to finish that off. Um, yes, most people hate the Patriots. I wanted to see history. And I kind of had fun with how they ran up the score on teams. I know it's kind of wrong, but I, I kind of believe in the, if you don't like what we're doing, then don't let us score. It's NFL. Don't complain about teams running up the score. Play defense and stop them. Um, so there was also uh, NBA teams. Will an NBA team ever go undefeated at home throughout the season and playoffs? Never lose a home game. That's never happened. Uh, there's never been a 41-0 home team. There's been a, maybe a 40-1 or 39-2 a couple of times. Never been a 40-0. Um, the Warriors going 73-9, and I, I didn't think I'd ever see that. But then they couldn't close the deal winning the championship, and I feel like that kind of taints the whole thing just like the Patriots. Um, NBA team going 16-0 and in the playoffs. And it was a time where it would have been 15-0 with the 2001 Lakers. And they famously lost to Allen Iverson in that step-over shot on Teron Liu. And that ruined their chances for 15-0. Um, I don't mind too much that they didn't get it because that Iverson play was sweet. That was also my prom night, by the way. I kind of did not get to see that because I had to go to my prom. But um, I don't know if a team will ever go 16-0 now that you have to play the extra game in the first round. Um, but And I guess lastly, going coming back from three games to none in a playoff series, and this kind of hurts my heart as a Yankee fan because I never thought it would happen in baseball, and it did, and it happened to my team. I Actually, I really would have liked to have seen that happen. I always wanted to see one of those happen until it ended up happening to the Yankees. And 
I know I get no sympathy for that because look at all the uh, championships the Yankees have won, championships I've gotten to enjoy as a fan. So not looking for sympathy. I just know it's a tough night no matter uh, how many championships your team has won when they blow a three games and none lead their biggest rival. Um, it's happened several times in hockey. I watch it happen 2010 to the Flyers, uh, to the Bruins when they led three games to none against the Flyers. And then the Flyers fell behind three three goals to none in game seven and still won that game. A couple of years later, the Sharks had a three games to none lead over the Los Angeles Kings. And that didn't work out too well for them. Not only that, none of the remaining four games that the Kings won were close. The Kings blew out the Sharks all four. That I've never heard of. Um, and then the Kings went on to win the Stanley Cup over the Rangers. So I would not have minded the Sharks thwarting the Kings 3-0 comeback attempt if it meant the Rangers beat whoever was left standing in the Western Conference that year. Um, but it's never happened in the NBA. Similarly, in the NBA Finals, three games to one lead. How, how did the Warriors let that happen? They were clearly the better team that year over the Cavaliers. I'll, I'll probably never get over seeing that. Um, I kind of fell in love with the Warriors' style of play that year. I really like enjoy Steph Curry. Um, when, after it was over, I developed an appreciation for what LeBron did and how great that was and how he brought a championship to a cursed city and came home. That was a great story. But as it was happening, I just could not believe I was seeing the Warriors choke this away. Um, so, that was the first time ever a 3-1 lead was blown in the NBA Finals. You also had uh, things like an 8th seed in basketball or hockey winning the championship, which I never thought I'd see. But the Los Angeles Kings again answered that bell in 2012. Um, they powered their way through the playoffs. They were actually a dominant team. Just like they turned out to be a dominant team in 2014 when they were down 3 nothing, and the remaining four games they blew out the Sharks. Um, they pretty much swept their way through the Western Conference playoffs that year. Um, there might have been one loss somewhere along the way. And then they beat the Devils in six and became the first eight seed in basketball or hockey to win the championship. So you can cross that one off. Um, I know the Knicks in 1999 were an eight seed. Um, they really had no shot against the Spurs, though, sadly. And in 2006, the Edmonton Oilers, another eighth seed, um, almost won the championship. They were within one game, lost to the Carolina Hurricanes. So I think that pretty much completes the list of all the things that I wondered, like realistically, if I could ever see happen in sports. Things like uh, an NBA team going 82-0 and winning the championship, no, I know that's not realistic. Same with baseball. So I crossed those things off the list. Um, so just to wrap a couple of things up, I know that uh, I wanted to mention that it was I had to go and look this up for you. Jairus Lyles. His stat line was unbelievable. He scored 28 points, 9, on a, nine of 11 shooting. 3 out of 4 from downtown, 7 of 9 from the line. Um, 3 assists. Okay, so he did turn the ball over 4 times. That's maybe the one. He had 4 rebounds. 4 turnovers might be the only thing on the stat line. That's like, that's not the best, but he's the point guard for the team, and he shot the lights out, and you could tell that... Uh, you know, I didn't know his name at the time I was watching him put on a show, but he was single-handedly stopping Virginia from mounting a comeback and driving to the basket and scoring easily over and over again. Um, this was an incredible exhibition, and even though I was struggling to remember his name at this time, um, with the amount of times that ESPN and the powers that be in sports are going to replay this over and over and over, um, Jairus Lyles is going to be a name I'm going to ask myself. And all you guys, the media, the sports media in general is going to ask you to remember that name for a long time because his legend is going to grow as the years pass. Even if UMBC, which is short for University of Maryland, 
Baltimore County, if you can remember that, even if they do not win another game in this tournament, this is going to be legendary. And another, this begs another question. Now that they chopped out, chopped down the number one seed, how far can they go? Can they knock out number nine Kansas State in the next round? Can they get to a Sweet 16 or an Elite Eight? Um, dare I say a Final Four? I can't see that happening, but maybe this is just a really hot team right now. Uh, they did win a conference tournament. They did win their last nine. Not all of those wins were convincing. A couple of them were. There's there's no way to measure exactly how hot this team is until we see them playing other tournament teams. But if a 16 seed were to continue and make a noise into the deeper rounds of this tournament, that would be one of the most unbelievable subplots, storylines, Cinderella stories you'd ever see. And uh, so if you want to mention in the comments, what is one of the things that you thought you would never see in the history of sports, whether it's something that did eventually happen or never did that you're still waiting to happen, um, something that maybe I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, just list in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'm going to be uh, trying to crank out more videos, some reaction, some a little bit more planned out. Uh, but this, I, I had to give a reaction to uh, what I just saw, one of the most unbelievable uh, blowouts in sports and something that's probably going to overshadow any buzzer beater that you'll see from here on out. Oh, I couldn't leave without letting you guys in on this. Um, just a fun fact that I just came across. Where do you think Jairus Lyle's parents went to college? Virginia. I'm sure they're happy for their kid, but they probably wished their kid could have uh, upset a different number one seed. Peace out, everyone.